In all, I've spent nearly two years in the Philippines, and during that time, I've learned a lot. The first time I came to the Philippines, there was so much I didn't know, which made everything so much harder than it needed to be. Now, I know there are a lot of you out there planning your first or next trip to the Philippines when things eventually open back up to tourists, and I want you to be as prepared as possible, at least more prepared than I was on my first trip. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 things I wish I would have known during my first trip to the Philippines. But before that, I want to play a little game. Can you guess how many provinces are in the Philippines? If you get it wrong, your punishment is to subscribe here to the We Wonder channel, causing you to receive continual doses of underrated locations in the Philippines and the world beyond straight to your subscription feed. If you get it right, that counts as one less day you'll have to wait for the borders to reopen for tourists. You got your guess? Good. No Googling. As of the time I'm writing this, the answer is... 81 provinces in the Philippines. Leave a comment letting us know if you got it right. If you guessed correctly, congratulations. If not, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to scroll down and hit that subscribe button, and you might as well hit the bell button while you're down there. Okay, without any further shenanigans, let's get into this. Number one, mix halo halo. Halo halo is the most famous dessert here in the Philippines. The first time I came here, I didn't actually order halo halo, so I didn't actually make this mistake, but I know I would have if I would have ordered it. And I've seen so many vlogs of other foreigners trying halo halo for the first time and doing it completely wrong guys halo halo translates to mix mix you have to mix all the ingredients up and then eat it together that's how the flavors are meant to be experienced so many tourists don't mix their halo halo the first time they try it because they don't have anyone to tell them to mix it which admittedly leads to some pretty funny videos of foreigners not understanding how Halo Halo works, but it also could lead to a bad first Halo Halo experience, which is super unfortunate. Like this, guys, this looks much more appropriate. If your Halo Halo looks like this, don't eat it yet until you make it look like this. If you order Halo Halo here, don't mess this up. Number two, traffic. Traffic in the Philippines is just different than anything I had experienced in America. So different, in fact, that this was my reaction after the first ride through Cebu City going from the airport to my hotel. Guys, what the, what the F was that, Taylor? We took our first taxi in the Philippines through Cebu City. What the F was that, Chris? I don't know, man. It's worse than New York traffic. We almost killed five people. Dude, they almost killed themselves, and then we almost killed people. Don't drive here. If you come to the Philippines, don't Somebody drive do it for you. and be prepared for when you get in that taxi. It can sometimes feel like there are no rules here, but actually there are, and they are enforced, at least in cities. The thing is, it just feels like people really want to break these rules as much as possible. As soon as a traffic officer isn't looking, people will start doing crazy things. It also just kind of feels like a battle on the road. Filipinos are some of the nicest people I've ever met, but on the road, they're deadly. Like really, here in Cebu, there are deadly accidents on the road pretty much daily. If you choose to drive here, please be very careful. Three, cold showers. Growing up in America, I've never been forced to take a cold shower. Well, okay, only that time that our water heater broke or when my brother showered before me and took all the hot water, but it's rare. In the Philippines, they absolutely have hot water. And if your hotel is even mid-range, you shouldn't need to worry about this. But if you're doing a bit more of a budget trip, be ready for this. Hot water is basically the first thing hotels will cut out to make the price a little bit cheaper. On my first trip here, even some of the nicer places we stayed didn't have hot water. To be honest, the Philippines is hot, so it isn't the end of the world, but it's gonna be cold nonetheless. And I wish I would have at least been mentally prepared for this the first time I came. Number four, breaking big bills. I remember our first morning waking up here in the Philippines. We were in downtown Cebu City and just wanted something small to eat for breakfast before heading to the port to go to Bohol. So we walked out of our hotel and went to the 7-Eleven that was just next door. We picked out the couple of things we wanted and headed for the register only to not be able to buy any of it. You may be asking why? 
Didn't you have money? All we had was the big 1,000 peso bills that the ATM gave us. 1,000 pesos is roughly $20 USD. Sometimes here in the Philippines, especially in the mornings, places cannot break these. They just don't have change for them. I don't know why exactly this happens, but it absolutely does. So anytime possible, try to break your 1,000 peso bills late in the day or at big establishments like malls. Because I'm not joking, you will experience this if you try to use a big bill early in the day. Number five, bring earplugs because karaoke. The people at this other resort right here, they're doing karaoke. They're doing Eminem right now. To drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. It's not that bad. She, she knows all the words. She's really good. <laughs> this might sound like a joke, but I'm deadly serious. Filipinos love karaoke, which isn't a bad thing at all. It only becomes a problem when it's time to sleep. In my experience, Filipinos seem to be pretty used to just hearing karaoke, and they can sleep right through it, at least my girlfriend can. But for foreigners, not so much. You're especially gonna have to worry about this if you stay at any resorts that are more meant to cater toward locals than foreigners. They're definitely gonna have karaoke. I remember when I went to Guimaras the first time, an island which was pretty much all locals, at least at the time. I didn't get much sleep at all. The people here last night were all about this karaoke machine, like all night. I don't know when they stopped. I heard them until way after I was asleep. They sound like they're having a great time though. Just be prepared because this will happen. Bring earplugs and if you like sound machines, throw that on top as well. Anything to block out another round of Touch by Touch by Tito Dodon. <laughs> Number six. Terminal fees. Have you ever gone to the airport, got your ticket, headed for the terminal only to be stopped and made to pay an extra fee for the privilege of getting to use the terminal? If not, you probably haven't been to the Philippines because this is literally everywhere. Not just in airports, seaports as well. I'm not complaining, but it absolutely took me by surprise the first time I came here. Not just the terminal fees either. Sometimes to get on a ferry, there will be like four or five different windows you need to go to and pay fees for who knows what before before they'll let you leave. It's just how it is here. But to foreigners who don't know this is coming, it's pretty shocking and frustrating. But now you know. So make sure to bring a little extra cash when you go to ports. Number seven, tipping guides. This is one thing I'm pretty sure we messed up the first time we were here and something I've actually seen multiple foreigners arguing with guides about in the past. When you go to a tourist spot, let's say a waterfall, the entrance fee you pay pretty much all goes to either the owner of the land, the municipality, or the barangay. In most cases, nothing goes to the guides, meaning that person who took a few hours out of their day to give you an awesome experience at the waterfall gets paid nothing unless you tip them. So yeah, it makes sense that they expect a tip. A lot of tourists seem to not understand this and think that when the guides are asking them for a tip, they're just trying to scam them. This is not what's happening at all. Just tip them something. We've had some incredibly great guides in the past and it's sad to think that there are some tourists out there not giving them anything. Number eight, people giggling at you. This only happens if you go to an area that doesn't normally get many foreigners. When we came on our first trip, we spent some time in Negros, Iloilo, and Guimaras. In areas like these that don't get many foreigners, the people there are really just excited to see you and not really sure how to act. You can actually see in my videos from the first time I came here that we kept complaining because people kept giggling at us or at the very least staring. And as for Oregon, there's just two ladies behind the counter and they both just crack up they're laughing for like so long even while we're eating they keep looking at us and laughing after a while like everywhere you go people are laughing at you and it's like I feel like I'm not we're not doing anything wrong like just don't take it personally they're either excited or curious Filipinos are pretty friendly people so just play along and hopefully give them a good impression number nine you're gonna need to do a lot of waiting, and travel always takes longer than you think it should. The Philippines is a pretty big country. It looks small on a map, but don't let that fool you. Travel times across even one island can take a long time. Add on to that the fact that almost everything is slower here in the Philippines, and you should expect to spend a large part of your trip just waiting around. 
This is unavoidable. It's best to just accept that this is how it is and plan for things to take longer than you think they will. Give yourself plenty of time to get from one place to another and don't plan too much in one day. This will make life a lot less stressful. Number 10, don't be so scared of things and people. The first time I came here was actually my first time ever being out of the United States at all. This may not apply to everyone, but where I was raised, it was definitely made to seem like leaving America was really unsafe. That everyone is gonna be out to get you, or at least try to scam you. And honestly, walking around cities felt pretty scary the first time I was here. Over time, I learned that people aren't out to get you, and for the most part, cities in Asia especially are way safer than places I had walked around in the United States. I think I would have had an even better time on my first trip if I would have just been more trusting of people here instead of thinking they wanted to hurt me or scam me in some way. But hey, you live and learn. I absolutely wish someone would have told me all this before I came here on my first trip instead of just sugarcoating everything and making it seem like an absolute wonderland. But now you know, and you can be just a bit more prepared for your trip whenever the whole pandemic slows down. Soon, maybe. Let's keep hoping and as soon as you can, keep wondering.